I'm Gus Downing, publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the Loss Prevention News Network. We're here today with Rex Gillette, Vice President of Retail Sales for ADT Protection One. The company is now one of the nation's largest commercial integrators serving the retail industry. They've built solid relationships with their retail clients by delivering an exceptionally high level of customer service. ADT has the breadth, the depth of experience, along with the latest technologies that can serve retailers' needs to protect their physical locations that range from burglary protection and fire monitoring to access control and state-of-the-art event-triggered video solutions. They also offer solutions to protect virtual assets as well. Through its network operations centers, they can help to design, implement, monitor, and manage dedicated security-only networks that separate the security network and devices from the business operations. You know, protecting customer data is a top priority for retailers today. And implementing separate security networks or simply partitioning existing networks to segment data is a good first step in helping secure their information and that of their customers. They've built their reputation by providing outstanding security differentiated by careful attention to detail from installation through ongoing services. They offer a security program for enterprise retailers that is nationally administered, oftentimes with a single point of contact for day-to-day -day operations. And with that, I'd like to thank Rex for being here. Thanks, Rex. Gus, glad to be here. You know, ADT's been in, in the news quite a bit over the last year, announcing a number of acquisitions. Can you give us a little insight into the thoughts behind those acquisitions? Sure, Gus, thank you. Again, thanks for having us. Um, to really understand our acquisition uh, process, you have to flash back eight years ago when our management team acquired Protection One. Protection One, eight years ago, was a primarily a residential small business uh, company with some uh, limited amount of national account uh, uh, business. And we, when we all got there eight years ago, we, we worked quickly to transform the company into not just a small business residential, but also a national account entity uh, to compete with the other integrators in the national uh, level. And to do so, we first of all hired a bunch of, uh, acquired a bunch of talent, national account managers and service technicians that were very experienced in the national uh, arena. Uh, but we also acquired a number of companies during that time frame, uh, a couple of them retail centric. Uh, but uh, we, we really needed at that time to, to make a, a statement from the national account standpoint. And we, we slowed down the acquisition process about two years ago when ownership acquired ADT. ADT, as we all know, is the, the nation's largest um, residential small business company. And we took our time uh, to really integrate the customer service centric metrics that we established at Protection One that really has set us apart over the past eight years into the ADT organization. Uh, no small undertaking. Uh, the merger went better than we, any of us expected, but it took some time to change cultures and to get that customer service level up to the standard that we always had at, at Protection One. Um, and so now with the combined company, we're back on the acquisition and really our acquisition profile right now is again to strengthen that national commercial uh, business of ours. So you'll see the national account, uh, uh, the uh, uh, companies we've recently acquired have the expertise from a technology standpoint to really address some of the needs that we needed to fill uh, within Protection 180T. Mm -hmm. I mean, you went from like 60 offices to like 250 or something of that nature. That's correct. That's, That's correct. a sizable feat. It is a sizable to, feat. Yeah, to, to instill that culture and, and really see it birth, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, and it really, uh, and again, we did it faster. You know, some people said it's going to take you two years. Some people said it's going to take you three years. We, we really had a goal, and we really got everything together within a year. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that was really a, kind of a stretch goal for ours. We made it. Um, we, uh, our same-day service metric, which, which we measure across all boards, whether it be residential or national accounts, you know, we were concerned that we wouldn't be able to get up to that 87% ratio that we currently live under, and it really took us a lot sooner than we expected to get the ADT organization up to the same standards that P1 has had for the last eight years. Mm. And that's something that you are, the organization is just focused on, Yes, is that customer service level. 
Yeah, it, it's been a cornerstone of our uh, 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 Tim Wall, our, our past CEO. I mean, it's trickled down when the CEO feels it, you know, everybody feels it. And right. so when he's passionate about it, passionate about the metrics, passionate about measuring everything from how long a phone, a phone call rings from a customer standpoint. Mm -hmm. All those things we measure daily, and, um, and we get a, a report card daily that shows us where we're falling, where we're doing great, and all that. Yeah. So. What, are, what are some of the benefits from the acquisitions? Well, the benefits are many. Uh, the first of all, just from a brick and mortar standpoint, you talked about growing the number of uh, uh, facilities we have across the country. Obviously, the, the more brick and mortar facilities we have with our direct employees, the closer you get to the customers. In some cases, uh, we might not have uh, uh, in the past, an office close enough, we'd have to use a subcontractor. Obviously, when you're using your own employees that are still in those metrics of customer service, the result's going to always be a little bit better. Mm. And so, uh, so from the proximity standpoint of, of, uh, um, of our offices, uh, that's, and i give you an example, the, um, the Red Hawk acquisition, Red Hawk Fire and Security acquisition, which we just, which we just, just took place, um, uh, not only complemented our fire offering, uh, kind of a hole in our portfolio that we had for the last eight years, but it more than doubled the size of our technicians that are capable of handling a national account and commercial entity. You know, the, we now have, you mentioned in your opening statement, um, uh, network operations centers. We now have two fully network operations centers mm -hmm. where that have engineers that are Cisco Meraki certified along with other Cisco certifications that allow us to truly offer a security network only uh, um, uh, offering that, that we manage. Uh, we, we also have now three um, centers of operations of excellence where we uh, take large uh, opportunities and completely design, project manage those, those opportunities. So uh, it, in a lot of standpoints, the acquisitions have brought uh, discipline to a higher level of technology. You know, in the past, we, we certainly, in some of the technologies like uh, Software House, Linnell, um, and Genetech, we, you know, we had regional strengths, but, but now with the recent acquisitions we have, we can honestly say we can take those technologies nationally mm -hmm. from a service standpoint and an installation standpoint. Yeah, I mean, any more acquisitions planned in the future? I mean, are you still on that path? Yes, we are. Uh, we are on aggressive, uh, uh, and we, one of the things we do with the acquisitions is that we're very careful about it because, uh, um, as, I, as mentioned before, the early acquisitions we, we made, the principals are still with us. And that's some of those go back seven, eight years ago. Usually when you acquire a company, the executives are kind of, as part of the agreement, or have to stay with you for a bound of time, but not seven years. Mm -hmm. And so that's a testimony to our culture. We are currently looking at a number of different companies, but first and foremost, the, the executive culture has got to be in line with ours. Because if there's not a customer service element in that company, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. and, and so we've, uh, you know, we've turned away from some companies that we've looked at that just, you know, it just, there's not that passion for the customer we feel. And uh, so that comes first. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the, the regions across the country where we want to strengthen our footprint, that, that's a consideration. If there's a technology offering that an, a potential acquisition is, is uh, you know, feels something we're not great at, you know, um, th those considerations as well. But yeah, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll happy to say in the D&D, you'll probably see more acquisitions take place in the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I've been impressed with over the last couple of years in speaking to that culture and maintaining it and growing it and such, is your President's Club, comprised of the leaders of the organizations that you have purchased. Yes. And, and I've seen it grown in, actually I've had a few chats with some of the folks that are on that team, on that club, so to speak. Can you speak to that in, in how that speaks to the importance of maintaining that culture and people that are passionate about what they do and, and they're engaged and staying with the organization. Yeah, it's, well, there's, there's two different clubs we have that we mentioned. Uh, one is our, our Founders President's Club, and that's taking all the principles of the companies we acquire, and they get together and celebrate. And the fact that they're all together, I mean, again, is a reflection of the great culture we have, because they don't have to stay. I mean, they, they sell their company to us, and they stay. And that's, yeah. that's, I think that's unusual. It is. Um, and we also have a President's Club, which takes the best of the best within our whole organization uh, once a year to reward ourselves for the past year. And it's not just sales, it's every um, aspect of our company. Top engineers, top, every discipline would be accounting or finance or, or service or any backroom stuff. And so we take the, the best of the best in the past year and we celebrate that success. And it's often at a you know, retreat, you know, an exotic part of the world. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to announce here today at the D&D that uh, retail centric, a couple of national account managers made this next year's club, or this year's club, or actually 2018 club. And your audience probably is where their names, they've been in the retail space for many, many years. And that's April Stringer and Jim Finley. Oh, congratulations to them. Yeah, any other comments or insights you want to you'd like to share? No, I, I would appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to talk to you all at the D&D &D, you know, every year. Um, certainly our story continues to, to, to change. And uh, we, we as, as you mentioned earlier though, 
uh, one, one thing that will not change is our passion for customer service. So you can, everything we do, you'll see that element in, in everything Protection 180 does going forward. Yeah, that's an, an honest revelation, I assure you. Yes. Yeah, thanks for being here, Rex. Thank you, Gus, as always. Well, that's it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to thank you for watching, and until next time, let's keep them all safe out there.